We're going to do a video on setting up the electronic throttle control in the Pro EFI. Um, it's a fairly simple task. You don't really need to worry about messing around with the PIDs involved. We just want to make sure that we capture the throttles correctly and then make sure that the DC offset is set up correctly. So we're going to go over that now. If you click on the throttle tab or Alt-E, that brings you into the setup. So a couple of things that we want to talk about here, um, aside from all the, the testing and stuff, the base calibration is going to have that stuff already set up. Frequency is important. You need to know the frequency of the throttle motor that you're going to run. And then the other functionality is pretty much going to be set up by default. You don't really have to change that. We'll go into the, the in-depth option setup and the PID setup in another video. But this is just basically calibrating the throttle sensor. So when you buy a plug-and-play kit from us, that you can just make sure that your throttle is set up correctly. This isn't necessarily setting one up from scratch. Although if you accomplish this next part, you'll be fine on pretty much any application. Like I said, these base PID settings work with pretty much every throttle body that uh, I've personally had to set up, which has been quite a few. So uh, first things first, we want to go to the sensor setup tab. And we want to validate that our throttle is coming in on the channels that we've got selected up here. Okay, so we want to select the appropriate analog inputs that we've got APP1 and APP2 set up and TPS1 and TPS2. So each, in electronic throttle, each end of the system has two sensors to validate that we're getting accurate information. The last thing we want is a def uh, defective sensor, lose a ground, and then all of a sudden the computer thinks that you want full throttle when you don't want full throttle. So there's those are set up in there as, as a fail safe and a safety to make sure that nothing bad happens if you lose ground or power. The other sensor is always there to say, no, this isn't what I want. Then that triggers a light. And then the fault manager, you're going to shut off the throttle. You're going to do all kinds of things to, to prevent an accident. So having said all that, let's go to setting up the throttle itself. So right now my pedal is at rest. So APP1 is giving me an ADC count of 196. And APP2 is giving me an ADC count of 100. So what we want to do is at the rest, this is the low adapt portion of that. We want to come in here and you can see this one's already set up, but you can see that I've got 10 less numbers on the low min, low adapt min, than my actual ADC account. Then I've got 10 above that on the high side. So it's basically telling the computer only adapt if it's between 207 and 187. Okay. You can tighten those numbers up a little bit or expand them a little bit, but I kind of really like the plus or minus 10. It seems to work very well in all cases, um, but it will adapt if I'm slightly on the pedal. See, I'm just barely touching the pedal. I'm already over 207. So this is a good number for us. All right. And then same thing on the other side, 100, 101, it's going 91, 110. So that's a plus or minus 10. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to full throttle and I've got 829 or 830. So 818 and 838 is a good number there, plus or minus 10. 412 over here. So we got 401 and 421. So that's a good number there as well to capture those. You'll know it's working properly when you come into the screen. These ones with the blue outline are telling you what the computer has captured for closed throttle. So right now it's captured my 196. That's good. It's captured my 100. That's good as well. Then at full throttle, it's captured... 827, I'm getting 829, a couple ADC counts, not a big deal. If it's 20 or 30, we got a problem. So then on this side, it's capturing 412 or 411. So that's fine as well. And if you want to relearn those, you do that at key on. So before you power up the ECU, you have your foot to the floor, power it up, wait a couple of seconds, let off the throttle, and that captures your wide open throttle for both TPS and APP. Every time you key on, Without touching the throttle, it's going to adapt your low throttle. So power up is when it does the adaption. So if you have to change anything for any reason, you go to a different throttle body, something wasn't set up correctly, and you had to make some adjustments in your in your capture ranges, then you'd recapture it by going to full throttle as you turn the key on. And then just at, after a couple of seconds, you shut the key right back off, let everything shut down, turn the key back on without touching the throttle, and capture the low side range. On capture the computer is automatically going to force the blade negative to capture the closed throttle. And you'll hear it doing that uh, from time to time when you're shutting the car off. 
you'll hear it move the throttle. It also does a spring test to make sure the spring doesn't have any issues inside the throttle body so that it can fail safe if something breaks. If it, if it has a spring issue, and I've actually had this happen before, on I shut the car off before the car wouldn't restart, went in and looked, and my throttle was stuck wide open because the motor broke, one of the gears broke, and it stuck. So the computer prevented the car from starting at that point in time. So you want to make sure those fail safes are set up. It's very important. You don't want to, you know, blow up an engine or crash the car because you didn't set up fail safes. All right. So you want to make sure and do that. For the throttle side, what we're going to do is we've got an override in here. So I'm going to force this closed to zero. So I'm going to do that by just simply clicking on override. And I'm going to type in negative 70% duty cycle. That's what this is going to do when I hit enter you're going to see it forces it fully closed, both ADCs. Now, if you set it up for the first time, you'll see this one here is reversed. If I don't reverse that and I put it normal, now my ADC counts high. We want all our ADC counts to be low at closed, high at full throttle. So this is a normal thing um, with several manufacturers. One of them uh, rests high, one ADC count rests high, the other one rests low. We're just inverting that in the software so that we look at a, at a like number, but the the voltages, or I'm sorry, the wiring that dictates that is so that if you lose a ground, it, one will be resting high and the other one will go high and it knows there's a problem. If you lose a power, one will go low, the other one will go uh, low and you're gonna, it, the computer is gonna know that that's the deciding factor, there's an issue there. So. If there's a wiring, a break in the wire or anything like that, you can't have the throttle go full throttle and do something you're not requesting it to do. It's just going to create a fault trigger, shut everything down, and then it'll tell you kind of where to go to, to fix your problem. So now that we're forcing this thing closed, we're going to check it again. And, of course, we've captured 165. We've captured 130. That all looks good so far. Make sure that we're plus or minus 10 on our low side capture. Plus or minus 10 on our low side capture here. That's all looks good. Then I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to open it. So now, you should be capturing 905. Again, that's good. We looked on here. We captured 902 when we closed it last. 878 to 875, plus or minus 10 up here. So our ranges for the sensors are good. So when I turn this override off, so once you click that off, then the output is it's not used anymore. So um, pass through. And then this number here. You don't necessarily have to change that, but I like to put it back to zero. Anyway, so now you'll see that my throttles are all going to 100%, and they're all going to zero. That's exactly what we want. So that's all looks good. The next thing you have to do after you scale the sensors, and we know the range of the sensors, is we need to go into the validation page. We made this very easy to set up. So your DC offset table here, what this does is it calibrates basically your open loop tuning for what it's going to take duty cycle wise to hold the blade against the spring the pid does the feed forward and feed back but to hold it against the spring we need a base offset okay so you'll notice as i move the pedal here we're just trying to track as closely as possible it moving around a little bit two three percent is not a big deal what we don't want to see is any large jumps here okay so right now we're hitting full throttle that's all good coming back that's all good and it's always going to you know, trail a little bit behind and lead a little bit coming up because we're trying to catch up to the target, right? So that's normal. So we just want to make sure that a closed throttle, it's going all the way closed, wide open, it's going all the way open. And let's just say, for example, we had the wrong number in here, okay? It was off. So you'll see as I feed it, you're going to see a big jump here in the actual pedal when we hit that number. See how it leads? It jumps way ahead right there. So all we're going to do is lower that until it doesn't do that anymore. Now, obviously, I know what it needs to be because we already have this calibrated, but you can kind of see what you're doing here, okay? So anytime you see, as you're just rolling in the throttle, you see a large jump on the on the actual TPS percent. This is request. This is what the computer's requesting. We're not looking at APP. We're looking at what the computer's requesting. That's very important because in idle, it's not the accelerator pedal that's requesting the blade position. It's the idle circuit that's re requesting the blade position. Plus, we also have this map here that is what we want based on accelerated pedal position so this is what our actual pedal is doing this is what we want to target okay so if, if you have this as a nonlinear curve it's not going to do you any good to look at the accelerated pedal position 
you have to look at requests. So that's the important option here is request. So as we're feeding this forward, we just want to make sure that our blade and our request are tracking as closely as possible. Okay. And it, it, you can spend a fair amount of time on this, but the reality of it is if you're within a couple of percent and you want more acceleration, you're just going to apply more pedal. So we just want to make sure that it's smooth in its transition and it's doing basically what we're asking. So if it's within a couple of percent, we're good. And you see any large jumps, you can come in and, and tweak that. Now, what you don't want to do is hold it in one spot and make the adjustment because the PID is going to catch it up and then you're resting against the screen. So if you see a spot that is jumpy, you go to that spot, click on it, make your change, and then just kind of go to that and test it again and then come off of it, come back to it like that. If you rest on it, the PID is going to control it. So you're not going to really see what you're doing here. So you want to make those transition through. So it's basically the open loop tuning that you're working with and let the PID do its, do its thing to, to make it track. That's basically all you're doing as far as calibrating the throttle. All the PID stuff, as I said, that's all set up. You don't really have to mess with that at all. You can try and tweak it here and there, but you'd be very careful with the electronic throttle because if you get too much proportional gain, it's going to get real jittery. If you don't set up your integral properly, you're going to get a lot of wind-up, which means it's going to constantly be chasing its tail. So um, if, you, if you aren't comfortable with PID, leave the PID settings as they came base. Make sure this is right. 99% of the time when you have a problem, it's because the sensors weren't set up correctly and these aren't capturing 0 to 100 correctly or you didn't spend the proper amount of time setting up your DC offset table and just making sure that this is right. This goes very quick because once you're past the zero point of the spring, which is the neutral point when there's no DC output, these numbers are stay pretty, pretty much the same. You'll see, you'll find an, a happy median there because the springs are pretty linear. So here we've got 19%, it goes up to 21, and then I go 36 to 100 just to make sure that it gets to 100 when you go full throttle. If you leave these numbers low here, sometimes it only gets to like maybe 96%. It doesn't really go that last little bit because uh, the spring tension just gets a lot harder right at the very end. And then kind of same thing with the close. You'll notice that that's a little lower there. So that's common. That's normal. Um, right around zero is, you know, if you if you kill it, if you do your duty cycle pass, uh, pass through your override here and make that zero, you'll see where the resting spring is. Like, for example, I'm just going to override this to zero. So now my throttle rests at 22% with no current output coming from the ECU. So at 22% is where we're going to be close to zero. As you can see here, 21 is minus two. So zero is going to fall right in there. If you want to change your index to 22% uh, and make that zero, you could also do that, but it's really not that critical because it's just going to transition right through there anyway. So that's electronic throttle setup. As you can see, it's really not that complicated, nothing to be afraid of, but you do want to, again, make sure that you go in and you set up the, in the fault manager all the basic faults. And like I said, all our base calibrations already have that done. So if you're working with one of our plug and play systems, it's all set up. If you're not working with one of our plug and play systems, you're starting from scratch, just open one of those calibrations and look at the faults that we have set up in there. And just make sure you have the same basic fault set up so you've got that safety cushion that we need.